Hey folks, when somebody just tells you, just use a map, I think they need a history lesson. I also think that they need a lesson on computer ethics, for real. Like some of us value free and open source software, you know, for us. We contribute to organizations like the Free Software Foundation, FSF, because we believe in digital freedom, transparency, and community. And there are those who are saying, just use something because it just works. And whether it just works is, well, rather debatable, but there's no deep conviction about free and open source software, no belief in the ethical foundations of technology like many of my viewers and I share. So discussing these ideas often feels like we're talking to a brick wall. And frankly, I wouldn't even try to appeal to them on moral grounds, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, most of them just don't care, right? But for me, I'm done with Apple, right? And I've been done with Apple for a long time. And it's only because their products have kind of let me down over the years. And even if you gave me a Mac... I don't think I would use it, and if I did, I would wipe it clean and install my favorite Linux distro, probably something like Pop! OS or Fedora, anything that respects my autonomy and gives me real control. Now, let's get something straight. I don't think most Mac users care that Steve Jobs basically built Apple's operating system off the backs of BSD, Berkeley Software Distribution. Apple took the key parts of BSD code. They made millions with their polished products and contributed only a fraction back to the open source community. And so, sure, I guess if you wanted to say technically Apple complied with the open source licenses, I'd argue, though, that their contributions were minimal compared to the profits that they raked in. So in the last few years alone, Apple's Revenue has soared into the hundreds of billions, squillions of dollars, while open source communities barely see a sliver of that pie. Just a few videos back, though, I did show you something kind of interesting about what happened to my old iMac G5. And I've had a couple Mac products after that, but I eventually came to the conclusion that every long term Apple user reaches, and that is, it's all about the Benjamins. I'm going to give you a really good example here. My dad, who's been an Apple user for over 40 years, he bought the Apple IIc back in 1983. He probably hates them more than I do, if I'm being honest. But I think he feels kind of stuck, right? He's so ingrained into their ecosystem. He probably feels like switching just isn't worth the hassle, right? But even for him, there was a breaking point, a moment when Apple's practices cost him a few thousand dollars. He had a collection of CDs. I don't know how many he had. He had, I know he had like 500 or 1,000 at least. I mean, I, I don't know. It could have been a couple thousand CDs. And he meticulously uploaded those to iTunes. He created playlists, he cherished his music, and for years, everything was fine. Then one day, poof, Apple arbitrarily removed all the music that he didn't purchase through iTunes. No warning, no, hey, back up your library before we wipe it clean. Gone. Here's a mu music that he legally owned disappeared because it wasn't a part of their store. When he contacted Apple support, they basically told him that he didn't own the software that he was using and that they had every right to remove his file. Imagine that. You're paying for a service every month, iTunes, right? You trust the company with your data and they just delete it. Music that he had purchased on CD was lost forever. And that was the moment. I realized a couple of things. A, how deep Apple's proprietary control goes. And B, just what a bad idea proprietary software is in general. Now, I'm going to go off script for a minute here, okay? And so I'm just going to ask that you go with me just for a second, okay? 
I wasn't planning on using this as an example because this just occurred to me right this second. And this is something that's been lingering in the back of my mind for a while now. And that's this. Take your favorite proprietary software, Photoshop Pro Tools, Adobe Premiere. I don't care if it's Microsoft Office, okay? They all have cloud services, right? So say that you are, you have, you're writing a song and it has some mature content in it, right? And it doesn't mean that like it's something immoral. It isn't like something like, hey, I like to rub my banana nana or whatever it is, right? It, it, nothing like that, okay? The Bible is filled with mature content, right? So just imagine, just for one minute, okay? Then you have mature content and it, there's something that violates their terms of service or free speech or whatever and they just you know maybe pull your song lyrics or pull some part of your song that they don't like or maybe they think it is pirated or something like this then they have these bots come in and oh there's some pirated music let's pull it right and and never mind uh, whether or not it's the finished product, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios where this is just a bad idea in general. But I'll give you a really good example that I think could happen today. And so you're working on your master's thesis and you're quoting Shakespeare. And Shakespeare has in one of his books, if I remember correctly, has the N-word. Okay. Now, it isn't a racial slur how he used it because in those days it wasn't a racial slur. But today, it obviously is a racial slur that I don't use and I don't think any white person should use, right? And pr probably the person who's writing this thesis probably feels that way, right? But he uploads that to the cloud and they have this AI bot thing sniffing through the documents you know basically looking for hate crimes and hate speech and all of this other stuff and they come across the n-word where they're quoting Shakespeare and he just pulls the document so would it be politically advantageous for some of these corporations to do what I'm suggesting I would say that well, it kind of depends. So if a government, say, wanted a pressure campaign against hate speech or something like this, right? You don't think that some of these corporations wouldn't comply? You don't think so? Why? Of course they would. And so most of the time when the government asks corporations to do something, they usually comply because it's financially advantageous for them to do so to some degree because of all the corporate welfare that gets handed out so on and so forth right but anyway back to the video so in 2015 i saw youtube videos where people basically bought like lower tier imax and like the i3 and i5 models and they upgraded the cpu and ram themselves right and what was really wild to me was that after swapping in a better cpu like maybe the i7 for example and installing cheaper third-party memory I actually got better performance than the high-end iMacs and power PCs that Apple was selling and to me this suggested maybe Apple might have been using substandard components in their premium models right and not long after Apple started soldering CPUs and memory directly onto the motherboard right making it impossible for users to you know upgrade their machines without paying exorbitant fees right this was striking to me right and so it's really interesting like how notorious apple has become for locking users into their walled garden of and proprietary connectors and special screws and the whole nine yards right and everything is just designed to keep you coming back back to them right and this is what baffles me to keep you locked into their ecosystem where they control the terms right apple controls software they control your data without your consent and they nickel and dime you the whole way and they control the flow of updates the apps you can use 
And in my dad's case, they can even control the music library that he paid for. Let's revisit history for a second. Steve Jobs once said that Linux will never be much of a consumer product. Well, as of now, Linux represents about 4 to 5 percent of the desktop users and that's like a 300 percent increase just in the last decade where mac os has just hovered around the same place between 10 and 12 percent and why well that's because people are not as stupid as apple thinks and jobs also famously said that linux is free but you get what you pay for sure steve you pay Apple thousands of dollars over a lifetime for hardware that becomes obsolete in like a few years and for software you don't even own and for a company that can just arbitrarily remove your personal files. Meanwhile, Linux doesn't cost me anything and it doesn't re remove my data without my permission. Now, back to BSD. Story goes that when Jobs came back to Apple in the late 90s, they were really floundering. And that's to put it mildly, right? So he used the code from NXT, which itself was based on BSD. And they were they did this to create MacOS. And that's like the foundation for all modern Apple operating systems, including iOS. Apple compiled with the BSD license, but contributed far less than what they took, right? And so the founder of OpenBSD, Theo de Roth, said that Apple is a bunch of hypocrites. They contribute almost nothing back to the community. Developers like Greg Lehi, who contributed to BSD, called Darwin the Trojan horse that let Apple take without giving much in return. And many people believe, as I do, that if BSD had received the same level of funding as Apple, it would have outclassed MacOS in every way. Apple took advantage of BSD's open source nature and used it to build a billion dollar empire. This brings me back to Linux. Unlike Apple, Linux doesn't lock you up into expensive hardware or proprietary software. And also, have you seen what a Mac goes for these days? I mean, like $4,000, versus $1,000 for the same exact laptop specs. That's a pretty big gap for me to justify. But hey, maybe you like throwing your money in the trash, right? And not to mention, like Linux just works on a wide range of devices. And in many ways, I'd argue that the Linux kernel is just superior to Darwin, the core of Mac OS, right? And Linux just popping up in places I would have never imagined 20 years ago. Server, supercomputer, smartphones, and even space exploration, right? And let's not forget about freedom. Yeah, this is what this is all about. This is what we mean, right? Freedom from corporations who erase your data. Freedom from arbitrary restrictions. Freedom to use your computer your way. And some people might say, but Shastin, don't you use Google? I would say, sure, for work. You know, I know they're data mining me, right? The difference is, is Google isn't costing me my work or my money. I can make an informed decision and take precautions. But with Apple, you don't even know when they're going to pull the rug out from under you.